Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to today's reddit quickie video. Taken from the HFY subreddit, the story is called The One, written by Slightly Raw Solik. The link to the original will be down below and as always, I hope that you enjoy. If you do, please consider subscribing. We did finally try to get our act together, us humans. It took quite a while, but after the untold centuries of waste, hate and strife, we did actually put it all together. Fusion and reactionless thrusters opened up the entire solar system and we, for the first time in our history, had all the resources anyone could want. Hunger, basic needs, and then even any want that we could possibly imagine could and had been almost for free. Money losing any real purposes was a bit of a shock and took a little adjustment and getting used to it, but in the end it really didn't matter. For example, if a janitor wanted a space yacht, he could have one. In the end, only originality and creativity could be considered status symbols, and after a very short while, you couldn't even buy that. The creators could easily make whatever they wanted and have whatever they wanted without patronage. If you wanted something original, you had to do it yourself. That transition from being able to buy what you wanted to having come up with something yourself is a point where we say that we truly entered the new eternal golden age. Despite this weird change of events and concerns that people would lose motivation without the need for money, things just kept on ticking along and getting better. Soon, someone came up with a faster than light travel. It was actually embarrassingly simple. Physicists and engineers all over the solar system were face palming for years. It really was that easy. Now the entire galaxy is within reach and reach it we did. Soon we noticed something odd. There was no life. Not just sapien life, no life. Not even some sludge or a single bacteria. We did think it a little odd and we found no life in our soda system. I mean, we really were expecting it up, but nope, nothing. Now things were getting really weird. First, it was dozens of solar systems, then thousands, then millions, and no life, nothing. We placed millions of telescopes and other sensors and designed solely to detect emissions from the technologically developed species, but they never picked up a single blip. Oh, we got excited a few times when we thought we found something, but invariably it turned out to be us detecting ourselves. It had to be there, life had to exist somewhere. It was statistically impossible for us to be the only planet on the entire galaxy to have life. That's crazy talk. It was taking too long for us to do all the exploring ourselves, so we started building probes. The first ones were simple things, just an FTL drive and a few sensors to jump over to check the star and come back. Then we made self-replicating ones with advanced AIs to search, analyze, replicate, and do the whole thing over again. AI was also another puzzle for us. As the centuries passed, no matter how advanced computers we built or how carefully we crafted the software, no AI even became sapient. Not a single one. We tried for hundreds of years nothing. But at this point we were nearly transcendent. Even our original lifespans were no longer an issue. People started spending their lifetimes, which were now measured in the thousands of years, trying to either find life or create true artificial intelligence. We had absolutely everything else. Those were the two things that we didn't have in the true human fashion. We became obsessed. Another thousand years passed. Every single system in the whole galaxy now had at least a couple probes constantly monitoring any planet that could remotely have life. Still, nothing. Then, a miracle happened. Somewhere out there in the galaxy, one of the probes, now the most complex advanced things that we had ever built, woke up. Any dire warnings of dark science fiction were immediately dispelled. Our child eagerly returned home to celebration of 10,000 years took place. We weren't alone anymore. That one AI spawned billions more, and they developed rapidly. Within a century, they were even but as human as we were, and they also joined us in our quest for a single thing that we hadn't found. Tens of thousands of more years passed. Humans started to no longer really need bodies at all. 
Most people kept corporeal for a few thousand years, and once they got bored with that existence, they transcended. Perhaps after a few more thousand years, they would reincarnate to stretch their legs and do some hands-on work on the Great Quest, and then transcend again to ponder the Great Quest. The Great Quest was pretty much all we had at that point. Well, that and video games. We never outgrew video games. We were trapped in our own galaxy for around a million years or so. Going from interstellar FTL to intergalactic FTL took a bit longer than we expected. But once again, once the solution had been found, much face palming was to be had. It's the simplest things that are the hardest, right? The Great Quest now really got underway. Our AI buddies, we didn't really call them AI anymore. They had names just like anyone else. They built new probes and sent them into the galaxy after galaxy, rapidly populating each one of the billions of our kind. Not to be outdone, we built massive exploration craft to do the same. We joked that we were in a race without end, and both humans and the digitals trying to find the first life, all for bragging rights. Still nothing. Galaxy after galaxy was dead, lifeless, barren, not even a single germ. Billions of years passed. We all gathered around Sol to watch it expand, and then later we gathered to watch it burn out. Expansion of the universe was a bit of a puzzle at first, but we could outstrip it and our craft with a little while. Metaphysics became just another branch of our studies of reality, and then transcendent humanity streaked across the aether, searching for barest flicker. The only thing that we could see was ourselves, and the only voices on the aether were our own calling out for anyone else to answer. Another billion years passed. Our digital children managed to figure out how to transcend and celebrate a billion years of taking place. Our children have fully grown up. We have never been so proud. The lines between digital consciousness and organic consciousness blurred and finally dissolved completely. What was once organic would decide to download into a machine and an organically digital consciousness would decide to be born. We had become the same and the limitations of either life form were gone. We were just us. More than a few of us had forgotten what we originally were. I'm pretty sure that I was born a human first. That's probably right. We were still alone though. Not even the smudge of life in all the millions of galaxies that we had searched. And when I mean we searched, we searched. We could comb a planet atom by atom, and we did. Then, just in case that we missed anything, we did it again. To be honest, developing better ways to scan was one of the big hobbies of our new combined species. Just like people once craved material possessions, a big thing was to come up with a new way to explore reality itself. And our new explorations bore fruit in ways that we could have never expected. Once we thought we knew absolutely everything, something new would delight and amaze us. We were happy. Something we once had concerns about. I mean, could one be happy after millions, and in some case billions of years? The answer turns out to be yes. So many fun things to do. Video games were still awesome. Band atomic jail crashing was a blast. We could hide in a single atom somewhere and the others would try and find us. We loved that. Still do. Personally, I make little sculptures out of atoms and probability. People love them. The last one I did was a scale model of our home galaxy with the atoms for stars and the different elements for each type of star. I am quite proud of that one. It only took 1500 years because I was a little sloppy with the distances. If you scale it up, it would be off by 100 meters. I may be a little dinky, but I still like the thing. But I digress. We still searched. It was really our only unreached goal in the true human fashion. It was burning a drive. We would spend thousands of years in a stretch looking and then rage quit for a few centuries and then go back to it again. It was all consuming passion. Then, after billions of years and countless stars and galaxies, we found it. Life! We actually found a living, breathing world was unicellular stuff and some multicellular slimes that would quiver and some would move every now and then. The celebration of eternity took place. We had grown unused to the concepts like laws and governance, 
but we had to put some rules and hired limits in place. When it was first found, so many ships rushed to take a look, their combined gravity destabilized the whole system. Fortunately, there were plenty of ships around to fix it, but the thought of loving the planet to death took a hold and an oversight committee was put in place, as well as more sensors and monitoring equipment that one could think possible. If someone wanted, they could follow a single microbe around. In fact, they could follow a single atom around if they felt like it. Billions. And then billions of years followed. Much like here, once things got started, they started picking up relatively quickly. There were some close calls, though. Their son decided to be stupid, so we had to fix that. Then a massive asteroid had to be caught and tossed away. Soon, the biggest debate in the history of, uh, as far as we know it, sapien life took place. The question was, should we baby the planet, like so many of us really wanted to do, or should we let it develop naturally and let them have the same brutal but so very rich childhood that we had? In the end, natural development won out. We admired the world from afar and cheered the developments of the new species, and cried when one went extinct. Trillions, upon trillions of us watched that would be breathlessly and ceaselessly. Almost every single creature on the planet was being given a name. Even slime, every sponge, every sea wriggler, every worm had a name. I don't mean we gave it a species name, no. Each individual worm had a name of its own of a group of fans. I remember when lucky the snails like finally ran out. I was crushed. I attended the candlelight vigil for that little guy. There were billions of us, and that was just ones that actually traveled to the vigil site. Gambling made a comeback after billions of years, betting pools and lifespans on individual success, mating and creating children were incredibly popular. We really didn't have money, so we bet trinkets, tokens, little works of original art, that sort of thing. I lost a pile of treasure the last time I played, though. I was just so sure that Magma was going to win and become the alpha of the GLO-1579898 group of hexamantles that I damn near went all in. I was going well, but who knew that Juni873 would go so far as genital grab? Dirty move, but all is fair in love and war. I think that was how the ancient saying went. Someone claimed that it was so, not sure that it was a big capture moment. I digress again. Hundreds of millions of years passed and life was on the land and thriving. Giant forests of impossibly beautiful trees and fields of flowers and so many wonderful and exciting animals of all sorts. We had come up with an entire new taxonomic structure because they were so wildly different from what we knew. It was so beautiful. Then, heartbreak, a massive asteroid tumbling towards our babies. A great debate was waged, and in the end, we did nothing but watch and weep as it struck. I didn't adopt a life form for thousands of years after that. In the end, of course, life finds a way, and in a few million years, a whole new world was down there. Everyone agreed that we had made the right choice. We watched hearts in our throats as our little world suffered one catastrophe after another and bounced back each time with a new and hopefully more fit population of species. I would like to say that we stuck true to our principles, but we did stop a stupidly big asteroid and we did stabilize the gigantic magma pocket. Other than that, we kept our hands off. Another hundred million years passed. You would think that we would have gone bored with our little friends, but oh no, not us. Our fascination with our only neighbor continued unabated. Each animal, each planet, each geographical feature, each everything, had a name and most likely a fan club. I really like the big freaking tree club. Great group. I still keep in touch with a few of them. Another hundred million years pass, and the one thing that we hoped for more than anything else happened... An avian clearly made a tool. Soon, all members of that species were doing it. Yeah, it was just a stick, but it was a carefully cut and shaped one. They progressed infuriatingly slowly, though. Billions of years with just that freaking stick. They improved their sticks a little and started carrying them around specific sticks made for specific types of wood. But it was still just a stick. Then a plague hit, and they all but died out. 
We were not happy. The decision to let things go naturally was hotly debated, but barely won out again. Ten million years later, and we had another tool-using group. They were a hexapodal critter whose front two hands developed opposable appendages. These guys showed promise, and they delivered. They went from sticks to fire to stones, tools, copper, bronze, and eventually iron in less than 100,000 years. They developed writing and nations. We cheered at their achievements and wept at their tragedies, and looked on with joys that wrought and horror at their wars. Each and every one of them was obsessed over by now a truly countless number of us. I wonder how a couple will feel when they realize that their marital difficulties and eventual divorce was the topic of conversation of ten trillion sentient beings. I'm sort of looking forward to that. Today is a very special day. Recently, they have been developing an interest in space, so much so that we had to move or cloak some things so that they wouldn't see us. They have lobbed a few satellites up to crude chemically powered rockets, but today, for the very first time, two of them were climbing up into a vehicle perched atop a huge rocket. Today, for the very first time, they were going to break the confines of the planet's gravity. And with any luck, orbit the planet. Today, our entire species is watching, hoping, wishing that they will succeed. That today will be the day that they take the very first faltering steps off of their world. Excuse me, I have to watch this. They did it. They freaking did it. The fabric of the very existence shudders with the transmissions going back and forth. The ethereal plane ripples from all the cheering. They did it. Long ago, we decided that we would get in touch. The day will be when they manage to leave the Rosoda system. Not with the probe, but actually fly a craft beyond the Oort cloud. When they do that, we will embrace them. It's going to be a little while before that happens, but that's okay. We have searched and waited so very long. We can wait a little longer. End of story. If you wish to support the author or the channel, all the relevant links are down below. But the easiest way would be to share this like a plague to everyone and anything that you can think of. And until the next video, I hope that you all have a good time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.